there's nowhere in the world quite like the Faroe Islands. If you're thinking of travelling there or simply curious, then stay tuned. Welcome to Faroe There's one adjective that you'll keep coming back to when trying to describe the landscape of the Faroe Islands, and that's rugged. The islands are made up of steep basalt cliffs, deep fjords, plunging waterfalls, and volcanic beaches. There's very little arable land, almost no flat land, except where they built the airport, and not a single indigenous tree. Faroese is one of only two living languages that derive from Old Norse, the other being Icelandic. The pronunciation is complicated and the spelling is even worse. But don't worry, the Faroese speak perfect English. Here's Sonia with some helpful phrases. Farewell. And how do you say, it's raining again? Oh, no rek not after. And if you wait long enough, then the weather might really surprise you. And you can strip off, run to the beach, and take a plunge into the icy waters of the North Atlantic. There's no doubt that the most romantic way to arrive is on the Smiril Line Ferry which connects the Faroe Islands with Denmark and Iceland. But most visitors will arrive by air, normally on the national carrier Atlantic Airways, landing here at Vegar Airport, around 50 kilometers from the capital Torshavn. The Faroe Islands are a nation in all but name. From time to time there's talk of independence, but for the moment they form a self-governing region of Denmark, an archipelago of 18 islands, roughly halfway between Shetland and Iceland. It used to be thought that the islanders were descendants of Irish monks, but recent DNA analysis has proved otherwise. Almost all of the men derive from Norway, but the DNA of the women is mainly from Scotland and Ireland which shows that centuries ago the Vikings set sail from Norway but instead of coming directly they made an important stop in the British Isles and brought along a few passengers. It's very hard to believe but until 1992 it was difficult to find alcohol anywhere on the Faroe Islands but times have changed. Faroese craft beers now win awards around the world and there's even a new distillery producing its own distinctive gin and whiskey. There are 75,000 sheep on the Faroe Islands of all different colours. Don't forget to also look out for the famous Faroese pony. And then of course there's the bird life. The best time to come is between May and September to see the puffins, the orcs and hundreds of other species. Faroe Island's greatest national treasure are the carved wooden 15th century pew ends from this church, which are now on display in the National Museum just outside Torshavn. All of the inhabited islands are connected by a network of ferries, tunnels, causeways and bridges. In fact, you'll find it very hard to avoid the tunnels here in the Faroe Islands, whether they're boring through the mountains or beneath the sea. You'll also find the world's only sub-sea roundabout, but there's also very good public transport if you don't want to hire your own car. The currency in the Faroe Islands is the Faroese krona, which is interchangeable with the Danish krona. But where do the islands make their money? Well, that's easy. Over 97% of exports constitute fish or fish products. Tourism is a very distant second. Other exports include the beautiful stamps, famous Faroese knitwear, and of course, music. There's a flourishing music scene here, 
and I highly recommend a visit to Tuttle in the centre of Torshaven. The Faroese global icon is of course Ivor and I'm a massive fan. The vibrant capital of the Faroe Islands is Torshaven, housing almost half of the island's population. It's the cultural and economic centre of the islands and for the visitor it's where you'll find most of the accommodation. To find out more about the capital then go to the separate film on the channel. The Faroe Islands are a fantastic and unique destination and I guarantee that if you come here you'll go home wanting to put a turf roof on your house. Save those energy bills. For now though, from the ruins of the 13th century St Magnus Cathedral, see you next time and don't forget to subscribe.